Hi everyone, I'm Vern Friedlander from Bannister Lake and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. You know, real-time data has never been more important for editorial storytelling, improving production workflows, and for creating exciting new business opportunities in broadcast, streaming, and digital signage. We're thrilled to have you with us and we look forward to telling you more about Chameleon, our real-time data aggregation and management solution. But before we begin, just a bit of housekeeping we'd like to do. First, we have a quick internal anonymous poll to learn more about our webinar audience. We'd like to learn more about which sectors of the industry you represent. So if you could just take a moment to answer this poll question, it's strictly anonymous for our internal purposes only and will not be shared. So it asks, what industry do you represent? Are you in broadcast, digital signage? That would include um, uh, some events and that sort of thing, cable, OTT streaming, events, venue related signage specifically or other. Great, thank you for participating in that. That helps us out quite a bit. Uh, we also wanna tell you that we welcome your questions and there will be an opportunity at the end of the presentation to answer any questions you may have about Chameleon. As you watch the presentation, please feel free to submit your questions using the Q&A tools on your screen. Simply type your question and submit. Uh, we will also be making a recording of this webinar available to you and posting it on our YouTube site which is youtube.com backslash Bannister Lake one. So you can review it later. So let's begin and I'd like to introduce our colleague from Bannister Lake, our director of business development and project management, Danny Lubisic. Welcome to the Bannister Lake webinar series, where we'll be focusing on our flagship product, Chameleon. First, if you don't know us, well, we're basically a Canadian software company. We've been around a long time, since 94 in fact. Now you may not have heard of us, but you've likely seen some of our work. We're the behind the scenes guys helping broadcasters with their real time data needs. From news, sports scores, social media, elections, polls and results, weather, and so much more. Odds are you've seen our data even if you didn't know it. In today's world, real-time data has never been more important. Audiences everywhere are watching from every kind of device and they're relying on getting news and information that is fluid because, well, life changes fast. That's why Chameleon is the perfect solution to help you make sure your audience has the most up-to-date information no matter what platform or device they're on. Chameleon is a powerful web-based product that aggregates real-time data from a wide variety of automated sources and paid services. In addition to these automated sources, Chameleon lets you enter your own data and content. Both automated and manual data can then be managed and moderated, allowing users to customize their content and output messaging. Ultimately, Chameleon is your one-stop solution. Whether you need to cover news, sports, elections, in venue and event signage, even electronic sports, sometimes referred to as eSports. Now, while the primary delivery mechanism for Chameleon is graphic output, populating graphic templates with our real-time content, that is, Chameleon, as per its name, has the ability to blend into any data thirsty system. How does it do it? Well, non-graphic devices, anything that can read XML, RSS, JSON even, can pull aggregated and moderated content from Chameleon through something we call Blade. No, not Wesley Snipes. Blade stands for Bannister Lake Active Data Exchange. Anyways, this is how Chameleon and you and your broadcast can share any of its data. Maybe feed the data to your website, for example. Nerdy? Maybe, but we think it's cool. While we've been mostly used in broadcast for news of all types of content, Chameleon is growing in other markets like digital signage and even streaming markets like OTT, 
uh, also known as over-the-top broadcasts, supplementing all of these with its real-time data. Elections are, by their very nature, data-centric. And Chameleons had some special features and tools for these occasional but super important events. Real-time data has become an essential editorial ingredient for virtually every platform, and Chameleon can help you maximize the wealth of information that is out there through its easily accessible and intuitive solution. In this segment, we'll be focusing on Chameleon as it applies to tickers. To begin with, what is a ticker? Of course, traditionally, people will think of a ticker as a crawl of data across the bottom of a screen. But tickers have evolved to mean so much more. Today, a ticker represents a variety of data in different areas of the screen, all appearing simultaneously. This allows our viewers to see not just the video that's going on, but data and different kinds of data at the same time. This allows our viewers who are interested in different things, different parts, to all get their information from our ticker screen at the same time. Of course, there's many different kinds and samples of tickers, whether they're full screen or whether they include video. The key to the definition of a ticker is that the data is supplemental to the video that is on screen. Chameleon for tickers is not just one part, but actually many moving parts all coming together to form a complete workflow. Here in this diagram, we can look at Chameleon from a very high level to be able to see all these moving parts. Here at the center of the diagram, we can see Chameleon, which is essentially a database sitting on a web server. This allows our clients to access the data and their content, including rundowns, and manage their entire Chameleon ticker channel through the cloud or through a browser interface. No dedicated workstations or applications need to be installed. This keeps Chameleon flexible as users can operate on any platform, be it a Mac, an Android system, or a PC, anything with the browser. Chameleon offers two different types of data input. Simplest and easiest is manual data input from our user group. Additionally, and the power of Chameleon comes from its ability to connect to and read various data feeds. Data feeds can provide automated data services from sports scores to financial data, weather, news, breaking news, as well as regular news. Once data has been ingested into the Chameleon database, it then becomes available for output to a variety of different devices. Chameleon supports broadcast as HD SDI, as well as web platform, such as HTML5, and even NDI. Chameleon data can also be provided in an XML format to websites and other data destinations. Before we can play out any real-time content and data, we need to design some graphic templates for which these real-time data is going to populate. What we're looking at here is the Chameleon Designer. This is our authoring tool in which allows you to create graphic templates for use with your Chameleon projects. As a quick walkthrough, what we see here in the Chameleon Designer is, of course, on the, in the center is our canvas area. The canvas is flexible in that you can design for different resolutions, whether it's HD, 4x3, 16, 9. You can even design, uh, in the world of digital signage, resolutions beyond HD, beyond uh, 1920, 1080 i So whatever re resolution you wish, you can design in. Here in our main canvas, what we can see is I, can, I have a text object, which I can move around on the screen to position properly. I can add other types of objects to my canvas, such as here inserting a quad, something that might be used for logos or simply to add some color uh, uh, to it. Uh, items will be in the background or foreground, and we can layer them up.
We also have the ability to insert onto our canvas embedded objects. So an embedded object would be possibly a video clip from YouTube. We can connect it to online and active sources. You also have the ability to group objects. This helps uh, uh, when we're animating things later to insert a group. That way we can animate a group of items rather than the individual objects. As I'm building things from my canvas, what you can see is my object list growing down here at the bottom. We can, of course, rename objects to make more sense for what we want. We can also then group objects. So for example, I'm moving the text into my groups so that later I can animate, for example, the logo with the text at the same time. Along that uh, uh, object list is, of course, the positioning information that we have for uh, th that particular object. Objects can be endowed with different materials. Materials will help you with colors and stuff like that. So here we have our materials manager where we can add materials or add an entire folder to import a number of materials at the same time. Once materials have been created, they can be assigned to the individual properties of our objects. So here from the canvas, if I select my text object, you can see the text properties that are available for me. I can choose here uh, different fonts. Chameleon Designer supports Google fonts, so no shortage of options as far as the font list goes. Also, we're able to do um, is assign the different colors and the different properties for our font, as well as alignment properties, word wrap, uh, the line spacing, also known as letting, um, any type of text property that you'd be interested in is pretty much available here on our properties tab. On the far left, we see our scene list. The idea of a scene is to make it meaningful. So for example, if I wanted to do social media, I might name this my Twitter scene. But ideally, what we have to do is name a zone. So where does this appear? The zones could be full screen or partial screen. So here, if I decided that my social media was going to be on the left, I might call it left side. If I wanted to start creating different content, I can create an additional scene from my scene list what I name it might be news in this case, but I want it to appear in the exact same spot as my Twitter. So here I'll also label this zone left side. This means when we publish in Chameleon, we'll be able to see that news and Twitter information is available for this particular left side area. When you want to work with content on any one side, you can either lock or unlock it to work with it, obviously. So if you're happy with the positioning of stuff, we have the ability to lock it, as well as to hide different scenes so that that way it doesn't clutter your canvas while you're working on things. Here in our scene list, we can also add animations through the timeline editor. Here in the timeline editor, simply add a new animation. We can select the objects, or in this case, the group I'd like to select for what we're animating and apply the animation values to it. What we can see here is a completed project. With a lot more detail, you can see we have an extensive scene list with different zones. Some zones have the same name, of course, they appear in the same area as I described before. But with each scene, we can either show or hide the information. So the weather in the top right is being hidden. When I click on this, you can see an extensive list of materials being used inside of this project, as well as all the objects listed in the scene. You'll note that objects which require data or objects which are going to be populated by our real-time data from Chameleon have special names. So here in the weather, for example, you can actually see this accent or this first character uh, shift six on most care, uh, keyboards. Um, so the uh, uh, hat accent, if you will, with weather and day three. Now to help you out, of course, because you don't necessarily know what's in the database, uh, there is a legend here. So for example, if I was to select weather, which is what we're on, again, this is just a legend. Uh, it allows that when I go to rename my objects, it actually gives me a list of all the different valid names that um, will connect me to the, my data. So uh, whether they're weather conditions for the first day or the second day, you can see here here, uh, lots of options, high, low temperatures, uh, the entire list is here. 
Uh, and again, the legend is specific to the data type. So if we were to look at social media, and again, this is just a filter that we create here, uh, but now these are the valid names that we could use for uh, items in our scene that we want to populate with the real-time data. Now, I'm not going to make any changes to my current scene here. But what I wanted to show is uh, in the animation module, uh, more in-depth animations. So, for example, there is this animation during the loop. Let's take a look at the in animation and how some of the objects slide in. What you see in our list is uh, highlighted objects which are uh, to be animated plus their values that they uh, maintain for each animation. So for the in or the out, as an example, you can see different values for the different groups or objects that we have. Once we have our graphic design completed, we'll simply save and then publish the project to Chameleon's database. The act of publishing shows, presents to you, uh, the list of scenes that you've created so that that way you can identify to make sure that your scenes are listed correctly. For example, news scenes versus closing scenes, which we see here. Also, the entire list of zones is made available so that that way you can double check this just before we actually publish to the database, making this graphic template available to now be populated with real-time data. To access Chameleon's data and to be able to moderate the content within, we go to a web browser. It doesn't matter what platform, PC, Android, doesn't matter what browser, Chrome, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Safari, allows us to log into our web server and access all of our data. Here we're presented with our main dashboard, where we have access to all the functions that Chameleon has to offer. To begin with, let's look at the content. The content section is the top left of our dashboard. Here you can see a variety of different data types that Chameleon has to offer, from sports scores to weather to stories, which we use as headlines. Let's have a quick look at stories. In the story module, I'm presented with stories that are available within a given topic. If we look at a, the BBC, top stories, for example, we can see a list of stories that Chameleon has ingested. This has been ingested from an RSS feed, and I know this because Chameleon represents each of these stories with a gear. As a producer, I can review the content that's available and decide if I want all of those stories to go to air, or using the TV icon, I can enable or disable various items from going on air. This is different than actually deleting the actual item from the list entirely, which is done over here by the delete button. If you wanted to add manual content or your own stories, you simply enable the show add new dialogue. The new dialogue box opens up at the top above the rest of our stories. You can still see the stories down here at the bottom. You can simply manually type in some breaking news or any content that you would want to add. And set various parameters for each item, such as does the story go to air immediately or set at a future date or time. Also, by default, all items have an expiry. This allows me to not have to worry about cleaning up old content the next day. I also have the ability to decide where to insert my story within the list before I even add it. Once I'm happy with the settings, I can actually click on the Add button and we'll see my story has been added to the list. As I don't want this fictitious one to play, I'm simply going to disable it from our playouts. So we won't see it later. You will note, though, that as a producer, there's a keyboard icon indicating that this story was manually entered. To return to the main page or the dashboard, simply click on the home button at the very top left of the browser. You'll notice that all the different data types that Chameleon has to offer follow a similar pattern. For sports scores, rather than dividing scores into topics, we of course divide them into leagues as that makes much more sense. Here, for example, I can select the NHL. I can show the NHL and also the add new dialog button where I will add some scores from a couple of teams. 
Of course, ideally, I would like to connect Chameleon to an automated data service where I could be collecting the scores manually. Uh, data services will often give you in-game scores, so while a game is in progress, which you could also manually set here if you wished, the automated services provide you with up-to-minute scores, current status of what period the game is in, um, as we can sort of see here, which was manually entered um, fictitiously, but again, an in-progress game in the second period. An automated data source would give you this straight up. Once we've curated our content, we want, we, we want to be able to add it to a rundown. Adding content to a rundown is really what connects this content or the data to the actual graphics which we designed in the Chameleon Designer. If we hadn't done so yet, we could first go to Shows. Here, Chameleon allows us to create new shows where we can specify which template to use from our published list of shows from our Chameleon Designer. Once a show has been created, you can go to the rundowns. Rundowns are also available directly from the main dashboard page. Here in rundowns, I will select our show in order to view the content within. As defined in our designer, Chameleon provides us with a list of zone, available zones. Here I'm going to select our banner zone and Chameleon will present me with the available content or data that I have that I can fill with this story. In this case, I can see that I've already populated the rundown with BBC stories. The rundown gives us more than just the ability to add and remove uh, content. Adding content is as simple as dragging from the available column to the assigned, and removing content is simply the reverse, dragging that content back out. But once content is in, uh, the gear actually gives us further control over our content, where enable opening up the gear allows me to determine how many stories to display at once before moving on to the next topic. When we loop back around, Chameleon will play the next two stories and the next two stories in the science topic until it's completed the list. So it won't repeat any stories until we've gone through the entire list. You'll also note that in order to keep content fresh, Chameleon enables you to shuffle your content. Once again, it'll go through the entire list of BBC Science stories randomly, two at a time, before it repeats any. Once content has been added to the rundown, it is available for playout. Here on my screen, I'm presenting two output windows of the playout. At the top right, you'll actually see output via a broadcast output via NDI. Down at the bottom is the similar output uh, using HTML5. As mentioned earlier, Chameleon can output to a variety of devices and platforms simultaneously. So with this, what we can see is in our banner area, the CBC top stories and science stories appearing on air. But how dynamic is Chameleon? Here, I will select my right panel zone, also part of my design. When we go to the right panel, we'll see that there's no content assigned. We can open up our sports scores, grab our NFL league, and simply drag it into the list. We'll see that as soon as it's in the list, Chameleon will begin to play on output our NHL scores. As new content is added, Chameleon will begin to cycle that new content dynamically within its list. Earlier, we were looking at the weather, which appears in the top right zone. What you'll notice is when you go from zone to zone, Chameleon will only make available content that it has a template for basically that came from the designer, which is why it's important to label some of these. Here we can select any one of our weather cities, but we're also able to select a playlist. Playlist allows us to generate a shorter list of content. So rather than dra dragging individual cities, I can, for example, use world capitals, which will now appear up in our top. Returning back to the main page, Chameleon on the right-hand side provides you with a preview of the content that is playing on air. Currently, what we can see is the 
rundown of data, including any issues. This concludes our brief presentation of Chameleon for Tickers. We hope you've enjoyed it, and we thank you for spending your time with us. If you have any questions or would like additional information or more personalized demo, please feel free to contact us at info at bannisterlake.com. Okay, thank you very much, Danny, for that uh, presentation. Um, it was a really great high-level view of Chameleon, the design tool, how data is linked, how it's controlled, and I'll put it to multiple formats. I think it's especially relevant as we see the whole industry moving towards cloud-based and virtualized solutions. So um, we do have time for a couple of quick questions. Uh, Danny, if you can uh, uh, answer these. Um, the first one is, um, do you support languages other than English? Could you support Japanese or simplified Chinese characters? Um, so it's kind of a two-part answer to that. Uh, the answer is yes, we do support uh, additional languages, but that support is on output. So uh, what that means is Chameleon can ingest data uh, and content from alternate languages and as well output that it is Unicode compliant um, through the fonts. Uh, what we don't have is uh, the, the Chameleon user interface. When you're in the browser, that uh, uh, the browser dashboard or that interface is English and uh, uh, that's currently the only language that we support. But the content within when you're reading stories uh, most certainly can be um, about any language. Okay, great. And um, second question and I think our final question because we're running out of time is um, we're pretty good at development in-house. Can we create our own data readers and use them in Chameleon or do we have to rely on your data readers? Uh, certainly, if uh, you have a development department um, or people that are sort of script savvy, um, generating your own readers, oh, basically the Chameleon database is an open database. Uh, so you're able to write to the Chameleon tables. Uh, so if you can interpret your, your own data sources or would like to read from there, um, yeah, you can create your own agents to populate that database. Um, Mind you, of course, one thing that wasn't sort of brought up and that might be relative to this, uh, Chameleon has a variety of, you know, data agents that uh, support sort of free version. We have Google Sheets. So, for example, if it's a school populating a Google Sheet with sports scores or something like that, we do have a Google Sheets yeah, yeah. reader. Um, so, you know, uh, rather than a, a paid sports subscription, um, you know, it's a little bit more manual but allows sort of other departments to fill in the content, Chameleon can then just simply grab it. So as far as the broadcast goes, uh, makes it a little bit easier because the content's then there right in front of you. It's already been ingested. Okay, ter terrific. Uh, well, thank you for that, Danny. And uh, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, Real-time data and Chameleon, as you may know, go far beyond tickers. And we'll be discussing some additional exciting use cases in future webinars. Next Tuesday, May 12th at the same time, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, We'll be doing another webinar focused on chameleon and elections. And then the following week on Tuesday, May 19th, also at the same time, we'll be looking at chameleon and on-air branding. And we hope you can join us for those webinars. Real-time real -time data has become a crucial part of visual storytelling across all media platforms. And chameleon provides valuable opportunities for all kinds of media businesses everywhere to get the very most out of their data feeds and use visualized data in new and exciting ways. If you have any questions or would like to request a personal demo, please feel free to contact us at uh, info at Thank you for joining us today.